Yo, Wagwan, it's Mr. Garfield here again, and today we'll be looking at another CSET mathematics pass paper question. All right, and this is taken from the May June 2017 pass paper. We're focusing on section eight, which is, which is geometry and trigonometry. Okay, and here we have a circle geometry question, and it says P, Q, and R. All right, those four points are on the circumference of the circle which is shown below, and they told us that angle QRS is 58 degrees. Okay, good. And here are some questions here. It says, using the geometrical properties of a circle, all right, give reasons for each type of your answer to determine the measure of angle SPQ, that's two marks, and angle OQS, that's three marks. All right, so let's do the first one here which is angle S, P, Q, all right? Angle S, here we have S, P, Q. So they're talking about this one here, all right? Angle S, P, Q, that angle here. Good. Now, how would we calculate that angle based on what we are given already? So they told us that angle Q, R, S is 58 degrees, as we can see, all right? But this is what I want you to realize. All right, I'm gonna highlight the, the shape in yellow. Okay. I'm gonna highlight the shape here. Good. What type of shape is that? All right. You can see that that is a quadrilateral, am I right? That's a quadrilateral. And you can see all of, of its vertices are on the circumference of the circle. Whenever that is the case, we call that a cyclic quadrilateral, right? A cyclic quadrilateral is when we have a quadrilateral where its vertices are on the points, are on the circumference, right? The vertices of the quadrilateral are on the circumference, okay? Good, so we're saying that S, P, Q, and R are on the circumference, which they told us in the question, All right? They told us that above. Great, so we have a cyclic quadrilateral. What do we know about the cyclic quadrilateral? Well, the theorem says that the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, meaning that they add up to 180 degrees, okay? So what I'm saying is that this angle here, which we're trying to find, all right, that is the angle SPQ, all right, and the angle QRS, which they told us is 58 degrees. When we sum those angles, we are to get 180 degrees. So we can use that reason to actually solve the first part of the question, all right? So the first part, which is SPQ, we are saying that the angle SPQ plus the angle QRS is equal to 180 degrees. All right, so we'll add those two angles to get 180. Good. Now, what do we know? We know that the angle QRS is 58 degrees. Let's, not, let's just put it in our equation here. So we're saying that angle SPQ plus the angle QRS, which is 58 degrees, is equal to 180 degrees, all right? So all I have to do now is just to transpose this equation to get SPQ, the angle SPQ as my subject, all right? So what I'm going to do to get rid of this 58 degrees here, I'm going to subtract both sides of the equation by the 58 degrees, and if I do that on the left-hand side, I will have the angle SPQ remaining. And on the right-hand side of the equation, I will have 180 degrees minus 58 degrees, okay? So the angle SPQ is equal to 180 degrees minus 58 degrees, okay? So all I have to do now is just to subtract. So we're now saying that the angle SPQ is equal to 180 degrees minus 58 degrees, that's 122 degrees. 
Okay, good. Now let me just write my reason here. All right, I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna write my reason here. Okay. Good. So what is going to be my reason now? My reason is that the opposite angles is the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral in a cyclic quadrilateral. All right, the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. All right, or you could say that the opposite angles in the cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Okay, means the same thing. Good, so we're now finished with the first part of the question. Okay, we're now finished with the first part. So let's just erase this here. Great. I just now tackle the second part of the question, which is the angle OQS. All right, the angle OQS. Here we have O, Q is here and an S, so we're talking about this angle here. All right, how do we calculate that angle? Okay. So what I'm going to do first is to find this angle here, all right? I'm gonna find that angle there, which is the angle O, which is the angle QOS, all right? That angle there I'm gonna find first. So how would I find that angle now? Well, let us look at this. Here we have a chord here, all right? S2 is the chord. And what do I know about this angle, which I'm trying to find, and that angle, which is at the circumference of the circle? What do I know about those angles? Well, it says that if we have two angles which stand on the same chord, right, the angles that we're talking about here is the angle QOS and the angle QRS, all right? So if you have those two angles which stands, on, which stands on the same card, which is SQ, then we know that the angle at the center, which is the angle QOS, is equal to two multiplied by the angle at the circumference. All right, so the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So we can use that reason there to find the angle QOS. All right, so let's do that down here. Good, so the angle QOS, all right, we're saying that the angle QOS is equal to two times the angle at the circumference, which is the angle QRS, okay? And this is now equal to two times the angle QRS, that's 58 degrees. All right, that's 58 degrees. And when we multiply now, what will we get? When we multiply, we get 116 degrees. Okay, good. So I can now come up here and say that this angle here is 116 degrees. All right, great. Let us now find the angle here that we're interested in. All right, which is the angle OQS, All right? Good, now how do we find that angle now? Well, if you observe the diagram carefully, here we have the center O, all right, here are the center O and what would these lines be? Those are two radii. All right, so we have two radii there. 
okay more than more than one radius is what we call a radii all right so the line os is a radius and the line oq is also a radius of the circle all right and here we have a triangle okay so what this tells us is that since os and oq are two radii then it means that this side all right this side of the triangle is also equal to this side okay and if that is the case then it means this angle here in the red is going to be equal to this angle here all right so it means that we have an isosceles triangle there okay so if i want to find the angle oqs i can just call it x some letter x all right and i know that that letter x is also the same as this x here all right because we know that in an isosceles triangle the base angles are the same okay so that is it that is important to know so let's do that down here so what we're saying is that the x and the x is the same all right so if i should add those two x's plus the 116 degrees here all right plus the 116 degrees here then we know that when we add all of those interior angles in the triangle we're supposed to get how many we're supposed to get 180 degrees right so x plus x plus 160 degrees equals 180 degrees all right so let's just solve this equation to find x so x plus x that's two two x right <laughs> two x is there and then we have 160 degrees equals 180 degrees so i'm now going to transpose this equation to find x all right so what i'm going to do is to subtract both sides of the equation by the 160 degrees if I do that on the left hand side, I will have two X remaining. On the right hand side, I will have 180 degrees minus 160 degrees. All right. And two X is now equal to 180 degrees minus 160 degrees, which will give me 64 degrees. Okay, so now I have two X equals 64 degrees and if I have two being multiplied by X, which is equal to 64 degrees, then I will have to now divide both sides of the equation to get X, all right? Divide both sides of the equation by two to get X. So on the left-hand side, I will have X remaining when I divide by two. And on the right-hand side, I will have 64 degrees divided by two. So X equals 64 degrees divided by two, which is 32 degrees. Okay, so 32 degrees is my solution there. So what is going to be my reason now? So let me just draw a line here and I can write my reason. Okay, so my reason now, what are my reasons? Well, we stated that since the angle QOS and the angle QRS all right so since those two angles stand on, on the same chord stands on the same chord all right then the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference so the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference all right so that's just one of our reasons that we had used okay so what is our other reason now the other reason was that the base angles of the isosceles triangle are equal all right 
And we also use that the sum of the interior angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. Let's just write that down here. So also the base angles, the base angles of an isosceles triangle. are equal, right? The base angles of the isosceles triangle are equal and the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay, those are my reasons. Good. So what we're now saying is that this angle here, which is X, all right? So we're saying that this angle here, X, is 32 degrees. So this here is 32 degrees. This here is 32 degrees, all right? Good. And this is 116 degrees, okay? And this here is 122 degrees. Good, those are my answers. For this past paper question, all right, from the May June 2017 paper. If this video has helped you in any way, please ensure to like up the video, subscribe to the channel, and also share the video with your friends, all right? With that being said, I am Mr. Garth Reed, Student Ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a Mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.